My name is Ken Clawson, and you're listening to Pro Lacrosse Talk. On Shriver. Snyder whip, scores! Now it's yeah. like Fidel scores! Hands off for Rabel, switches hands and scores! Kylie O'Miller showing off those shifty skills. Right off the bat, there's Lyle Thompson! Welcome to Pro Lacrosse Talk, the voice of Pro Lacrosse. I'm Hutton, he's Adam, together we're bringing you interviews with your favorite players and coaches, as well as news from all four professional lacrosse leagues. All right, I'm here with Ken Clawson, All-American with UVA. MLL champion, and the newest defensive coordinator with the Denver Outlaws. Ken, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No, it's great having you on. Um, you know, I want to start a little bit at the beginning of your career. You grew up in Pennsylvania. You attended the Hill School. Uh, tell us when you first got started in lacrosse. Yeah, so I, you know, I started playing lacrosse a bit later than, than a lot of these kids today. I started playing around sixth grade, probably. I was a football player. Baseball was not was not my sport. And, uh, and uh yeah, I started, you know, started started playing lacrosse, like the physicality of it, and uh, really didn't start getting uh, to be any good at the sport until probably my uh, my tenth grade year in high school. You know, it was was I, that's when I started to fall in love with the game. But uh, but yeah, I always picked it up slow, didn't have any stick skills, and then uh, over time started developing, really fell in love with it, and, and started picking it up uh, a bit more aggressively in high school there. Awesome. And then when did you kind of get looked at, um, you know, by colleges and you eventually decided, you know, attend UVA and play under Coach Starja? Kind of what led to that decision? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's, I mean, it's crazy thing how early the recruiting starts nowadays. You know, I really didn't start getting looked at until, until summer going into my senior year of high school. And so, uh, and so, you know, it was certainly later than it is now. I, I had uh, originally committed to, to Duke, actually. And, and then when that, you know, everything, my senior year of high school was when that, that unfortunate scandal unfolded um, down in Durham. And so with all that going on and uncertainty with the program, I ended up switching to the University of Virginia and playing under Coach Stars and Coach Van Arsdale and uh, and loved every bit of it there. You know, the people I met the place, it was unbelievable. And, you know, couldn't have been happier spending my, my four years down in, in Charlottesville. Yeah, it's awesome. And you excelled there. You were a four-time All-American and a Torton finalist your senior year. Uh, what was it about the culture that, you know, made you decide to, you know, become a Cavalier? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it was, I hadn't really been to campus at all throughout the recruiting process. And, and you know, upon stepping on campus, you, you immediately are drawn to it. And the place is just beautiful. And, and obviously the style of play that they have um, is, is, is a lot of fun, you know, up and down, fast paced across, gives you Gives you, you know, coach, coach stars. It gives you the freedom, and, and you know, you earn the trust. And when you got it, you have some freedom to play, um, and use your your abilities um, wh- wherever they may be. He's going to cater to that a bit. So, it was a lot of fun playing there. That you know, the teammates I had were just outstanding, and, and so much of my personal success, as you know, often is is predicated upon this, you know the, the talents you have around you. And so, um, the goalies that I was able to play with, Kip Turner and Adam Gittleman, the defensemen that I was around. We're just outstanding, and and uh, it was it was an unbelievable four years, and and uh, yeah, I miss I miss Charlotte, so there's no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And uh, I don't want to bring up old wounds, but how tough was it losing in the semifinal matchup uh, your senior year to Duke? Yeah, it was it was tough. I mean, it's it's one of those I, I constantly hear from people even today that was the best game that I ever saw, and mm-hmm. uh, you know I, I think that means something but uh you know it's, it's always tough you know we we had lost we lost to the final we lost in the final four three years in a row you know I had myself for junior and senior year of Virginia which was which was tough senior year you know definitely uh we had a lot there was a lot going on with 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 Jarley Love's passing and and everything that was going on that we were dealing with as a team it was uh I was I was really proud of the team and how we um how we stuck together how we battled through I was proud to be able to make it to the final four we needed every day together that we could afford, and uh, and we laid it all on the line. You know, Duke had an outstanding team. They were they were knocking on the door for years, and uh, and um, you know they're they're quite the competitor. And so it was. We, we laid it all out. We gave it everything we had. Um, I tell you what, I couldn't have been more proud of that 2011 team coming back the next year and winning it. You know, with so many of those guys having gone through what what we did, and uh, for them to be that resilient, and come back and win, both both the players and the coaches, staff, I couldn't have been any more proud of, of what that program was able to accomplish. Um, you know, in 2011, the year after I graduated, it was really something special. Yeah, no, that's great. And um, you know, I actually listened to an interview with uh, Lars Tiffany, you know, the current UVA coach, and he kind of talked about that too, like trying to create a culture um, where you know the class before feels somewhat responsible, even if they've moved on, um, you know, for the championships that follow. And, you know, I think you guys, you know, making it 
to four straight Final Fours and eventually winning it in 2011. I think you guys really, you know, established that culture and, you know, kept it going uh, with Coach Starja. Your your presence was still felt even on that 2011 year. Yeah, yeah, and I appreciate it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, those guys carried the day, Steele and Bray and, and Haldy and, and all those, you know, incredible players in 2011, you know, and I think, you know, credit to the coach and staff for keeping everyone focused and, you know, that's expectation, you know, UVA, whether it's with, you know, Coach Starza or, or Coach Tiffany, you know, the expectation is UVA is that you're, you're winning, you know, that's the goal and uh, anything else is, isn't satisfactory. And so that's the expectation of that program and they've done a great job continuing that. And yeah, very, very proud of that program. No, that's awesome. And then uh, going off of that, you know, you were drafted by the Outlaws and you played for them your rookie season. You had a few injuries, um, but you eventually, you know, won that 2014 season, the MLL championship um, before, you know, a, a few other injuries sidelined you in 2016 and you, you eventually retired. But uh, how, you know, how was it playing for that organization um, during the time you were there and how excited are you to rejoin the organization now as a, a coach on the sideline? Yeah, you know, I mean, I was I was so fortunate to get picked up by Denver in, in 2010 and uh, as soon as I came out and looked around, I decided this is where I need to be. And so my, my then girlfriend, now wife, you know, we, we packed up and moved out to Denver in 2010. And, uh, and we've been here ever since, you know, playing that rookie year with, with outlaws was outstanding. And, you know, 2011, 12, 13, I was, you know, missed three seasons due to three separate ACL injuries. And, uh, you know, my whole goal coming back was always to just win. You know, I just mentioned, you know, in, in, at Virginia, I didn't win. We, we, you know, we didn't win uh, while I was there. And, and that was a goal always. And so to be able to come back after three injuries, um, you know, missing three years and then coming back 2014 and winning a championship was, it, it meant the world, you know, to, 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 to me, to be a part of it. It was a goal and aspiration that I had in sports. And so to be able to come back um, and, and win meant a lot. And so, you know, of course, for, for so many reasons, the Denver Outlaws just hold a special place in my heart. Uh, being a resident here for now a decade, but also just experiences I've had with, with both the staff and the players. Um, I love the organization. So to be in this position now, I'll tell you, I, I didn't envision it five years ago. Uh, it was, I, I, you know, it's, I was still in that mode of a player thinking about coaching um, just wasn't, wasn't in the realm of possibility or, or, you know, even a thought in my mind at the time to be, mm-hmm. be in this position right now, to be, to be the defensive coordinator. I couldn't be more thankful and grateful for the opportunity that the, you know, President Matt Bocklet has given me and the organization. I'm I'm so excited to be back and and eager to get to get rolling and and ready to ready to rock with these guys. I'm excited to to compete and you know to to, to compete to win plans to win. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And you know, you, you kind of got your starting in coaching uh, at the high school level. Uh, talk me through too. You know how you kind of got involved in coaching and you currently coach uh, for Cherry Creek uh, with President Matt Bocklet. Um, how's your relationship with him grown? And has he been kind of a mentor for you in your coaching career? Yeah, he's been he's been such a great mentor for me. And you know, I got I got my coaching start and you know, I, I coached a bit in college, you know, coming back during the summer and coached some youth and uh and then, you know, really when I got hurt, um, you know, in twenty eleven, twelve, thirteen, those seasons I missed, I, I started coaching a bit more, you know, getting more involved in the game. It was really one of the only ways I knew I could get better while not playing. And so that's really where I started to see how much I didn't know and how much I can learn and, uh, and started getting more involved in the coaching game, originally starting at Wheat Ridge with, with Chris Knott and the great coaching staff and, and players over there. And then now, you know, over at Cherry Creek with, with Matt Bocklet and, and, you know, just the tremendous staff and, and program and team and, and parents, everyone that we have there. And so I've, uh, I've loved every bit of coaching. It's really been, um, been great to be a part of. And then in terms of, you know, Matt Bocklet, he's been, he's tremendous. I mean, he's such a, such a great leader and has such a great mind for the game and, and being able to work with him, um, you know, being able to play with him and, and learn from him as a, as both a teammate and, and him as a captain while being on the outlaws and now watching him lead our, you know, lead Cherry Creek to, to a state championship and, and seeing how he operates, watching how he, he dealt with, uh, with the outlaws last year. I'm very excited. I, you know, like I said, I'm thrilled to be part of the program. It's, it's such an honor and, and to be a part of a coaching staff that has, Coach Seaman and, and John Grant Jr. And, and John Cohen, three three people that I just look up to and admire so much to be a part of that is uh, is really exciting and, and yeah I'm really thankful for it. No, that's awesome. And then to you know transition a little bit to uh, your day job with Warrior. Um, when did you start working for them? You were kind of the poster child for them when you you know first got out of college and were sponsored by them, but you actually worked for them as well. Um, when did you first get that gig and how has it been working for Warrior? 
Yeah. So, you know, I got that, I got that, I've been with Warrior now for almost a decade, which is just, it's crazy. I mean, you know, I, I started with them as soon as I moved to Denver. I'm, you know, I told you when I first, when I first got picked up by the Outlaws, I looked around and said, this is, uh, this is where I got to be. And immediately start, started talking to guys on the, on the team. And, and Jesse Schwartzman had quickly mentioned that, uh, that Warrior was looking for, for, uh, for, you know, had a job opening out here. And so I, uh, I quickly, you know, got in touch with Warrior and, and uh, signed on with them, uh, and you know was able to to get a job with them right out of college. And so, uh, yeah, just a tr- tremendous brand. You know, we're owned by New Balance too, which is just such a such an unbelievable brand as well. And so, um, been working with them has been great. It keeps me certainly involved in the cross, which I love so much. And 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 uh, you know, working with so many of the pro athletes and and uh, you know, college teams, high school programs. It's been it's been a lot of fun and yeah, to be able to wake up every day and be involved in lacrosse is just really, really great and something special and something I'm, uh, I'm certainly thankful for. No, that's great. And, uh, one final thing I kind of want to touch on too, is your, phil- your philanthropy mm-hmm. work, you know, with, uh, the mustache madness that you started in college. Um, and now you've been continuing that with the headstrong foundation. Uh, talk me through how you came up with that idea initially for the challenge and, um, you know, how important is it to you to kind of raise money for those affected by cancer? Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. So the, you know, the cross message madness was was something that came about, you know, in two thousand nine with, with um, at, you know, at UVA with with you know, as a co-founder, but with with both Todd Fiella and and Rebecca Dozo, the the trainer there, and we we wanted to kick this off, and the idea initially came about that, you know, I was I was actually in Fiji of all places, and heard some people talk about uh, Movember, which was something that had that had started in Australia and had really not made its way to the U S yet. And, uh, my initial thought was immediately that some, this is something we could do in the lacrosse community. So it would be fun. I, I had this, you know, silly finger stash tattoo in college that was had some, a little bit of notoriety, you know, and, uh, and so it kind of blended with, with what, what I, some things in the personal life and, and lacrosse and how we could do it. And so we kicked that off in 2009 and, and you know, we, 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 uh, we run this in conjunction with, with headstrong foundation. I mean, this event is, is doesn't happen without the support of Headstrong and Pat Kyle Lori, who just does such an amazing job over there, and that entire family and, and staff at Headstrong is just unbelievable. And they are, they are such an incredible foundation, you know, improving the lives of of patients and families affected by cancer. That's it's so tangible the the impact that they have and what they do, and they have such an incredible uh, team that it's it's so special to be able to work with them and uh, and have an event within the lacrosse community that kind of brings everyone together. It's meant to be fun. You want to be able to laugh at yourself, and it and it certainly markets itself when people ask you why you have a mustache and why you're growing it. And so, yep. to, to start, you know, our, our, our first year we raised thirty thousand dollars to now be raising annually over a quarter million dollars. We raised over a million dollars total for for the Headstrong Foundation. It's uh, you know, it's a it's a great credit to the lacrosse community and and uh, you know, the ability for for the you know and the desire for that community to want to give back and help and support and. Uh, and it's been really great to see it just continue to grow year over year. And, and yeah, really, really proud of what we, you know, both myself and uh, as a part of the Headstrong Foundation, what that group does and, uh, and how they operate. And, and, yeah, once again, really thankful for the lacrosse community for the continued support. We've been doing it for 10 years now and year 11 coming up, coming up this fall. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I talked to Pat Collor. He, he was great to talk to. And I think, you know, what they're doing is, is really important. And I, I think, too, the foundation itself, too, hits on a lot of different aspects. It's not just the, you know, it's not a, a research organization. It's really focused on supporting these families with their basic needs uh, during their, their toughest time. So uh, I love what you guys are doing. And yeah, looking forward to, uh, you know, the 11th year of it coming up. Your point, I think for anyone that's interested, check out headstrong.org. And, and uh, you know, what they, you know, something to really keep an eye on is, is Nick's house, you know, a, a patient facility where they have families um, staying during this, during their time in need. And so as opposed to, to having to get a rent a house or get a hotel room or, or whatever, they have a, you know, they have a, you know, a house, Nick's house where these patients can come and stay, go get treatment in Philly and not have to pay out of pocket during that time. And so once again, you see the people you're helping, you realize the impact it has. Headstrong is just unbelievable. And for anyone looking to help or find out more information on them, check them out at headstrong.org and just an incredible family, incredible group, and really proud to be, to be working with them. No, absolutely, and I know they're running a, a last shift campaign as well. A lot of people in the lacrosse community supporting that, so guys, definitely check that out. Um, that wraps up our main questions. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll go into our 5-5 five five segment. Uh-huh. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Pro Lacrosse Talk podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, Anchor. We've been using Anchor for the Pro Lacrosse Talk podcast since the very start. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place, and better yet, it's free. They allow you to easily record and edit your podcast, and once it's published, they send it out to all the major networks such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and many more. They also connect you with advertisers so you can start making money from your podcast right away. So if you're thinking about starting a podcast today, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Today's show is being brought to you in part by Stitcher Premium. You can use Stitcher Premium to listen to shows ad-free such as Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, Wolverine the Lost Trail, or our favorite, The Fantasy Footballers. For only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year, you get access to Stitcher Originals, bonus episodes, and comedy albums. Better yet, if you go over to stitcher.com premium and use the promo code lacrosse today, you can get one month free. So head on over to Stitcher, sign up, and get your free trial today. All right, so welcome back. Uh, now it's time to go into our five and five, Ken. So the first, I'll start off with the lacrosse questions. Uh, number one I'll ask is, what has been your favorite venue to play lacrosse at? Favorite venue? I mean, look, there is, I'm, I'm as biased as it can be, but mm-hmm. Clockner at UVA, just to me, when that place is packed, there's no better place. You know, it is just outstanding. Uh, and then, once again, my bias is going to show through, but I think the best spectacle in lacrosse is July 4th at Mount High with the Denver mm-hmm. Outlaws. And so... Those two places are just, for me, far and above uh, the best, the best places to play. Absolutely. Yeah, Clockner gets talked about a lot. Um, I, I forget who it was. Someone said Clockner. You know, obviously the UVA guys like to say Clockner, but um, I forget. I think we had somebody on. I can't remember. Um, must have been an ACC guy, but uh, even him, like, playing at Clockner just because of the energy, even as, you know, being an away team. Um, so I definitely think that's one. And then Mile High is always on the top of everyone's list. Yep, no doubt. Uh, number two, who's the toughest player you ever had to defend? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, it's it's hard to put one. I mean, there's so many great great players out there. I tend to, you know, I had the benefit of going against so many great guys at at Virginia that you know I I tend to exclude some of those guys because I never had to cover them in a game. You know, guys like Steele or Ben Ruby or Danny Gladding, guys who were just so tremendous. Um, you know, down at the you know attack at Virginia. So I think all those guys, you know, I had the benefit of going against them every day and. And then, you know, on opposing teams, you know, there's there's guys that were just a challenge, you know, whether it was like a, a Billy Bitter at UNC who just gave me fits, you know, I was I couldn't have been more happy when he was picked up by, by the Denver Outlaws, so I didn't have to cover him at the next <laughs> at the next level. He was tough. I mean, there's there's so many guys, um, you know, Duke had so many players throughout, you know, my four years there that were just <laughs> tremendous and outstanding, whether it was Donowski and Crotty or Quinzani, the guys that just gave you fits and um, you know, there, there's a ton of great guys, you know, Mike Lavelle was another one that was a challenge. There's, there's so many great players, um, guys that were just so good. It's, it's hard to fit a, put a finger on one, but yeah, those are a few that just were, were quite a challenge covering. Gotcha. Uh, and then number three, what has been your favorite lacrosse memory? I mean, you know, I think there was, there was so many like just exciting games at Virginia, things that just were, were so special that, that, uh, it's hard to put a finger on on one of those, you know, obviously winning the AC champion, AC championship my senior year meant, meant a lot, but just big games down there were always, always meant a lot. Um, you know, I think that coming back after, you know, three ACLs and playing that, that first game with the Denver Outlaws was one that just is always going to be cemented in my brain. You know, um, mm-hmm. it was just such a special moment for me to be able to come back. I, I'd put so much time and effort into it that to, to finally be stepping on the field meant a lot um and you know i think also just coaching now too i, I you know i'll throw some of those games in too like just you know coaching with cherry creek and winning the state championship last year was was also something special and just a totally different feeling than uh than playing you know and and was was something new and exciting so yeah those are a few it's uh yeah there's it's tough to put a finger on one but a lot of a lot of great memories that's for sure absolutely yep and then uh number four what were some of your pregame routines or superstitions when you were playing yeah, you know, I, uh, I, I really, I didn't, I tried not to have too many superstitions. I think my mindset there, I'd have a routine certainly, but superstitions, I didn't want to, I always felt like I would already be setting myself self back. If I couldn't do something, I was already at a disadvantage before the game even started. I thought that was a bit, uh, a bit silly. So I think, you know, typically I was, I was trying to have fun, you know, keeping myself as the game got closer, I was getting a bit more intense. I'd always try and retape my stick um, and just do, do that in the locker room, listen to some tunes, and uh, and kind of just think about the matchups. Think about you know visual, a lot of visualization. What's happening? Who am I covering? What does that look like? 
thinking about it. But yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. I didn't want to have too much, too much in order in case, like I said, I couldn't do it. But uh, yeah, that was generally, that was generally about it. Yeah, that makes sense. And then my final lacrosse one is, what was your favorite uh, warrior product, whether it's a head, shaft, or even like a piece of apparel um, that you got to either use or uh, market? Yeah, no, I mean, look, Warriors had a bunch of bunch of great stuff. I think that, you know, uh, for me, honestly, uh, I I wish I could have played when, when the warp was out. I never strung a stick. I never knew how to string a stick. I don't even know how to do shooting strings. It was so far from my realm of what I cared about mm-hmm. that having something like the warp where I just wouldn't have to think about it uh, and wouldn't have to do anything with it and then it, it, it would perform the same in any way. Like, that would have been so right up my alley that – uh, I wish I could have been around when that was when that was a product and I could have played with it. But uh, it's something that I've had, you know, a close relationship with a, a warrior working on with some of our pros. I've been really proud of the development that's that um you know that that we've seen with that. And then look, you know, our ultimate goal with that product is is to grow the game. You know, we want the game to be accessible and uh, and be simplified a bit. And if we can get more people playing by by having a stick that works right off the bat and get them engaged. And that's, that's what we all want is for this game to grow and for, for people to have an opportunity to play. And so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's been a, a product that I'm really uh, excited about and, uh, and envious of to an extent that I wish I could have had something similar when, when, you know, back in my playing days. No, absolutely. I think it's great. Like you said, to be able to give, you know, these players a stick and not have to worry. Cause you know, a lot of the time it falls on the parents too, to kind of figure out how to string the sticks or, you know, get the right mesh. And um, I think, limiting that uh struggle is is, is important um I, I have a bonus question though uh for the, the lacrosse related is warrior gonna ever bring back the coxswain shoes because i have a pair and uh they reek right now so i was looking to get some more but you know right now it doesn't look like they're they're making them are you guys gonna bring them back at some point oh you know i'll have to talk to warrior new bounds about that i love the coxswain and i've got about 15 pairs that are just wearing through and i keep rewashing them and wearing them I love that shoe, and so I hope they bring it back. I think it's a great question. I'll let them know that people are asking because it, it, that yeah. was that one was a personal favorite. And yeah, I'm in need of some some newer uh, some some updated colorways here. So yeah. yeah, I hope I hope so. No, they were awesome. I would I just would wear them all the time, like whether I'm at the beach or um, you know even like you could wear them kind of like dressy shoes too if you had like a you know somewhat semi formal event. Um, but mine at this point. They just smell so bad. Even how much I wash them, it's like I think it's uh, I'm like it's ca- kind of to call it quits or whatever. But uh, I had them yeah. since like 2013, and they were awesome. So yeah, uh, yeah, put them in the wash. Maybe some baby powder. That's yeah. another. Yeah, maybe, that's maybe that's what I'll out. try. Yeah. Back it um, up. Yeah. But with that, that, that's our lacrosse questions. Now for some off the field questions. Uh, you had the signature long hair in college. When did you decide to cut your long hair, and why? Yeah. Well, so you know, I had I would cut it. I would cut it occasionally. I could cut it, I think, midway through college. I would cut it and donate it. So I'd done that a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately, uh, it was when I got married in 2015, my wife was like, oh, how about we cut that short for this uh, wedding and do that? So, yeah, I was already, uh, you know, uh, you know, happy wife, happy life was in it before before I was in it. And so cut it then. So, yeah, that was kind of, you know, 2015, I haven't really had long hair for since then. Uh, I've been growing out a little bit, though, since, uh, since the end of last uh, high school season. So, We'll see. Right, right. We'll see how long I can get it before my wife gets on my case again before I got to cut it. But we'll see. I'm trying to get away with some longer hair, changing it up for a bit now. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Uh, number two, what are some hobbies or activities you enjoy doing that aren't lacrosse related? Yeah, that aren't lacrosse. I mean, look, I love, I love music, you know, and so going going to certain shows. My brother's a drummer um, in this cool band, Strange Machines. He lives up in Burlington, Vermont. So I'm always trying to check out He's also very involved in the music industry, so it keeps me up to speed. Different concerts, different bands that are coming around that I should check out. So, um, yeah, if I'm not if I'm not doing something in lacrosse, whether it's work or coaching, um, I'm usually trying to get to a show, see some see some live music, and uh, and get away doing doing some of that. Awesome. And then uh, number three, this might kind of go off of that. What are some favorite places to go while you're in Colorado? Yeah, I mean, so yeah, right off that, I mean, Red Rocks is certainly going to be going to be one of them. Um, Red Rocks is just such an incredible music venue um, that if you ever have a chance to check out a show there, I don't care who it is or if you like them or not, it's it's an experience. And uh, I think the fact that the venue is such a um, renowned place, you know, every artist that comes wants to put on a show as well. And so they're they're in awe just as you are, and they're ready to put on a show and do something special. And so you get a lot of really 
great music that's happening there for a bunch of different reasons. Other than that, you know, I mean, uh, or aside from that, you know, the mountains are an obvious place to go, whether it's Vail or Breck or, or Steamboat or wherever, like checking out, going up in the mountains and checking those places. It's pretty, it's pretty nice out in Colorado, being able to get out and escape and see some really neat, um, you know, outdoor scenery. So yeah, one of those two, getting up in the mountains or going to music, that's, that's uh, some, some great options for you. Awesome. And then going off of that, uh, what has kind of been your favorite place to eat? Um, and do you prefer to dine out, take out, or cook at home? Uh, we, you know, we've we've got a bit of both. I mean, we'll, we will we'll, recently. I do more of the cooking than, than my wife does. Um, mm-hmm. And so when we're cooking here, I've got you know a nice little smoker that I tend to use all the time. And so putting some things on that and cooking up is usually a go-to for me. Outside of that, um, in terms of you know I'm right in Denver. I'm like right in the Highlands. Sunny side area, so just outside of the city, and we've we got a lot of different restaurants popping up and things. I think a, uh, a little favorite of mine here close by is this place, Old Major. It's got some great, great fried chicken sandwiches and some great food there, and uh, a cool little venue. But yeah, I think look, any places in terms of places to eat, this whole Highlands area is has got some really neat, n- neat places to to go and check out. And uh, yeah, it's a cool little area. Awesome. And then my final one is, uh, what's a book that you've read or a podcast that you're listening to that you'd recommend to a friend? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got two, you know, right now that I'm I'm reading. I think one uh, is going to be, I hope you will be very happy. Dom Starr's yeah. his his book that just came out. It's just fantastic, and uh, and so I've been continue. I've read it, and I continue to just con- read different stories and reread it and, and get little lessons from him on that. And so. That's always fun. I just hear his voice as I'm reading. I just hear his voice in my head, so that adds a little fun element to it. Um, so that's been really great. And then another one that I've just started reading that I'm enjoying is uh, is uh, Brands Win Championships. Is a new, new like a book that I'm. It's not a new book, but it's a, a new one for me that I've been reading and digging into that I find pretty interesting. And so checking that out. And then uh, other, I'm usually in a couple books. This other book I'm in is is uh, Ron or Ron Swanson, that's uh, Nick Offerman, uh, the guy, Ron Swanson from, uh, yeah. <laughs> from Parks and Rec. He, he's got a couple books and I've read some of them. They're just, he just cracks me up. That guy is, is something else. And so, yeah, those are the kind of the three that I've been, I've been chipping away at right now. And yeah, all great picks, all, all great books and, and picks for you guys. To check out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I'm reading. I hope you will be very happy. And we, we interviewed coach Starja right before that came out. And, um, you know, just again, learning from some of the stories, like you said, like I obviously didn't know him well enough to like kind of hear his voice when I'm reading it, but you can still kind of even going from that interview, just see all the stories and all the wisdom that he has. Um, definitely love, love that book. Um, so far, you know, I think I'm on chapter like three or whatever, but, uh, yeah, there's just, uh, you know, still got a ways to go, but still, still a very, very good read. Um, but with that, that wraps up our, our five and five. I got one final question for you that we like to ask our we like to ask all our guests is what's some advice that you have for a young player looking to one day play lacrosse professionally? I think, um, I, I would encourage them to coach. Um, I think that regardless of what level you're coaching, um, whether it's youth or, or high school, I think, and it's something you can certainly do, whether, you know, if you're in high school or you're in college coming back for the summer coaching, it, it forces you to really think about, what you're doing and why you're doing it. How do you explain it to someone? What's the rhyme or reason? When you can start becoming a coach and understanding why it's happening, how to explain it, what's going on, you, you start coaching yourself when you're playing. And uh, I think that in college I'd always yeah, – I, I thought I knew a lot, and I, I looking back, I didn't know anything. Um, you know, I've learned so much. I wish I could go back and, and, and play again with some of the knowledge, you know, that I have now. And so – I think that, you know, we always say whether it's stick skills, you can always get better. And your knowledge of the game can always improve. And the, the smarter you are as a player, the more you can anticipate things happening, the better you can react, the better you can coach your teammates. Um, I think that coaching really helps you as a player, understanding what's going on, why it's happening, and being that kind of that, that, that field general on the field is, is important. So, um, yeah, I encourage guys to coach. Learn the game. Keep learning what's happening. Study people. Study coaches. Study what's happening continue to expand your knowledge and it's gonna it's gonna help you a lot as a player no that's some great advice we appreciate that ken well ken this has been great um thank you again for joining us and we want to wish you best of luck with the outlaws yeah thanks so much i really appreciate it. thanks for the time and wishing everyone the best during this time
Today's show is being brought to you in part by Stitcher Premium. You can use Stitcher Premium to listen to shows ad-free such as Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, Wolverine the Lost Trail, or our favorite, The Fantasy Footballers. For only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year, you get access to Stitcher Originals, bonus episodes, and comedy albums. Better yet, if you go over to stitcher.com slash premium and use the promo code lacrosse today, you can get one month free. So head on over to Stitcher, sign up, and get your free trial today.